the city desires what they do and makes use of it for the attainment of eternal peace, which alone is the only true peace. That is the orderly and united communion of men who find their joy and fellowship in God. This is the reasonable creature's own peace. Once it is attained, death is banished, and life then is true life indeed. Nor is the carnal body any more a weight upon the soul. There's that distinction again between the physical and the spiritual. By its corruptibility, but now the body itself is spiritual, perfected, and entirely subject unto the control of the will. Okay, so is this distinction between the city of God and the city of man going to be helpful to people uh, living at the time Augustine lives? So who am I? Who should I be? Maybe what Augustine is saying here is that as a Christian, you really shouldn't think so much of yourself as a Roman. You really shouldn't think of yourself as someone in this world tied to possessions. Right? You should think of yourself as someone who's longing for that everlasting peace, someone who's stockpiled with treasure in heaven. So who am I in relation to others? Well, I'm connected in some way to these Romans, right? I pay taxes along with them. Uh, maybe I'm going to join with them in military service. But I'm different too, right? I'm a part of the city of God, and somehow I'm different and distinct. Plus, I now see that I'm more connected to people from all tribes and all nations. Right? So my connectedness to people living in Africa and Asia, that far supersedes any connection I have to the Romans. Right? So if you think about it, this idea that uh, the city of God transcends nations, it's a pretty powerful thought. And, uh, I think that's the 